Okay, hello everybody. Uh, today I would like to talk to you about the solid principles of object-oriented design. So, what is solid? Well, solid is a set of guidelines for object-oriented programming that was introduced by a programmer named Robert C. Martin, who is affectionately known as Uncle Bob, that's Uncle Bob, uh, around 1995. And he introduced these uh, principles in response to a pattern of issues he kept seeing coming up in object-oriented code. Um, and most of these issues had to do with too much dependency. There was dependency everywhere, which I think most of us like to call spaghetti code. Um, and people weren't really taking advantage of the sort of um, flexible interfaces that uh, classical language and object-oriented programming was providing people. Um, so what specifically were these bad coding symptoms that he was uh, identifying? They were rigidity. Basically, you change one part of your code and some other part of it breaks, which I'm sure a lot of us have experienced at one point or another. Um, also, there's fragility, which is basically not only does something else break, but it could break in a totally unrelated part of your code to the point where you get a bug, but you don't realize it at first, and then it pops up later down the line, and you're not even sure where it comes from. That's fragile code. And also immobility. Basically, you can't reuse code outside of its original context, which kind of sucks if you start to have deja vu and are like, well, oh my gosh, I've already written code that does this exact thing, and you go to try to take some of your old code and reuse it, but surprise, you can't. It only works in its original context, and then you end up having to write the whole thing over again. So how do we fix these problems? Well, solid to the rescue. Uh, <laughs> so what exactly is solid? What does it stand for? Because clearly it's an acronym. Uh, solid, the solid principles are the single responsibility principle, the open closed principle, the Liskov substitution principle, the interface segregation principle, and the dependency inversion principle. Now, this probably just looks like a whole bunch of words. Uh, luckily, the rest of my presentation is mostly actual code examples, uh, so we can talk about when these things will come up in your code life. Uh, so first up is the single responsibility principle. And this principle states that a class should have only one reason to change. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that it should only have one function. It just means if you find yourself having too much, basically, and there's different parts that could change for different reasons, chances are you should refactor your code and separate some things out. So here's an example. Uh, so here we have a couple of constructors for different shapes. We have a circle, we have a square, and we have this thing that's an area calculator that essentially takes in an array of these shapes, and using this sum method on the prototype is able to calculate the sum of all these areas. But wait a second, we also have an output method on this prototype for area calculator. Now, does this really belong here? Well, let's take a second to think. Why would you change the, the sum method, and why would you change the output method? If you think about it, you would change them for two totally unrelated reasons, and that probably means we need to separate some of this. So in our happy refactored version, we have another constructor for something called calculator output, and on this, uh, on this prototype is where we put things like different ways we would style the output from area calculator. And the great part about this is that we can continue to add different types of stylings for this message output to be whatever we want and we never have to touch area calculator. So now we can just pass in an area calculator and calculator output is what takes care of all of the styling. So we're basically separating things out. It's a single responsibility situation. Next up is the open-closed principle. And this states that you should be able to extend a class without modifying it. This might sound kind of counterintuitive at first, like how could you extend the use of something without modifying it? Well, I, hopefully the example will uh, clarify a little bit. So now let's revisit the area calculator and this sum method. Um, I have found myself in this situation before where you end up having a long, complicated chain of if-else statements that in is usually checking the type of something. Or in this case, we're checking each shape to see if it's an instance of square or if it's an instance of circle. And then we're calculating the area with whatever logic happens to be in there. But really, we have to think to ourselves, does this logic belong in area calculator? It probably doesn't. 
if we refactor it so that each shape, a square or a circle or whatever shape we can imagine that we want to find the area of, has its own area method on it, we can pass any of those shapes into area calculator and as long as it follows the shape interface and has the expected method, we call the area method and boom, the area calculator works. So in this case, we could keep adding different types of shapes and in that case, extend the use of the area calculator without ever having to change any of the code. And that's great. Next up is the Liskov substitution principle. And this one states that derived classes must be substitutable for their base classes. Now, I didn't actually understand what this meant until I found this meme, <laughs> which says that if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, but it needs batteries, it's probably the wrong abstraction. So let's give an example. Say we have a constructor for a rectangle. And we were really good at geometry in high school and we think to ourselves, well, a square is a rectangle. So if I'm gonna make a square, why don't I just inherit from rectangle? But notice how when we're making the square, we're altering the way that it functions. We're passing in one argument and making that both the height and the width which makes sense in the case of just making a square. It works fine until later down the road you think to yourself, oh, I want to make a different type of rectangle. And since I know that square inherits from rectangle, I can just inherit from square and make a rectangle. Well, wrong. Now this is not going to behave in the way that we're expecting. So now when we make this cool new awesome rectangle and we call the area method on it, it returns the wrong value. It's returning what it would be if it were a square and not a rectangle. And that's why it violates the Liskov substitution principle. Um, so a better way to do this would be to just make square its own thing from the outset. Um, I know it would be beautiful if we could just make square a type of rectangle and that everything could just model the real world perfectly, but sometimes in code it doesn't always work out that way. Next up, the interface segregation principle. And this states that we should make fine grain interfaces with specific methods. So essentially, if you find yourself with extraneous methods that don't belong there, chances are you need to refactor your code. Here's an example. Uh, say we make a constructor for a shape, and we give this shape an area method and a volume method, because it makes sense. Shapes need areas and volumes. But then we make a triangle, and the triangle inherits from shape. Well, now triangle has a volume method that it doesn't need. A triangle is two-dimensional, it's not going to have a volume. What should we do instead then? We should really separate shape into one constructor and specifically a solid shape into a whole different thing. So that way we make a triangle, we only get an area method. We make a cube, we get our volume method and there's no extraneous methods floating around for anyone. And last but not least is the dependency inversion principle, which states that we should depend on abstractions and not concretions. Stated another way, take advantage of interfaces. Interfaces can be your friend. So here we have a picture. And notice inside of picture, we are actually creating a new instance of shape. Well, now we have totally made picture dependent on shape, which is not something that we want to do. If you're declaring, if you're making a new instance of some other uh, constructor inside of the definition of your constructor, that's probably a sign that you should rethink things a little bit. In this case, we should maybe pass in shape into picture. And as long as shape is following the specific interface that we're expecting from a shape, meaning in this case that it has a set color method that we can call, then everything works fine. And now picture doesn't ever have to know anything about what shape it's being passed in. As long as it follows the, the expected interface of a shape, it will work just fine in picture. So you might be asking yourselves, is this really relevant for us in JavaScript? Because as we know, JavaScript isn't a class-based language as much as ES6 wants us to kind of pretend that it is with its new syntax. It's not, it inherits prototypally, we know that. Uh, but I, I would assert that keeping solid in mind can make for better code, uh, even in the cases of using JavaScript. And I think that's because if you take a step back from all the like classes should do this, classes should do that, like rules of solid, I think the overarching theme is that you really should orient your code towards future use and not just immediate needs. So like, don't be lazy. <laughs> Take a moment when you're writing your code and think about what is this gonna be used for in the future? How can this be flexible? How can I you know, get the most mileage from my code? Because um, as we all know, modular, flexible, and independent code is happy code. Uh, these are my references. There's this one really awesome link to a talk from Uncle Bob that I would highly recommend watching. It's really great. <laughs> 
that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions?